Good morning, my name is Denise. Welcome to Suncoast Crafting. Today we will look at Around the World, Color by Number by George Tufexis, published by Creative Haven. This wonderful color by number has 46 challenging scenes from around the world. There are city scenes from London, England and Barcelona, Spain. There are also landscapes from Banff, Canada and Hawaii, United States. This is my first color by number for adults and I am having fun with it. Let's see what's in around the world. In the front is a color key. I had fun changing colors with each picture and sometimes in the middle of a picture. Before I start, I make a copy of the color key so I can try out different swatches. I found that having a place to scribble and test out colors was extremely helpful. At the top of the key is zero for shade. This is a gray or similar color to darken a nearby color by blending the two. I used gray, but I also used silver, and in some places I just darkened the color I was using. There are also thumbnails for each picture on the inside, front, and back covers. Since I usually use pencils, my colors are softer than what is shown in the models. The pages are single-sided and perforated to allow maximum creativity. I used mostly pencil in this book. This gives a softer look, and with the way I blend, sometimes I lost a little detail. But for me, pencils are easier to match to the key, and I feel more relaxed using pencils. The book recommends using harder pencils and to start with lighter colors. Sometimes I did that. This is your coloring adventure. Use the medium that you like and start where your heart tells you to. And just have fun. Now this book is more challenging with its dark and light lines and a lot of fine detail. There are places where an area is too small to show a color number, but there may also be places where a number was missed. An area might not have a number because it should be white, and there are areas where the same color is next to itself, which makes showing detail a little difficult. For Amalfi Coast Italy, I used Prismacolors, and I achieved a softer blended look. I also outlined the bird and the tree in the foreground to help them stand out. For Athens, I used Starjoy pencils. The colors came out bright and bold, and I love my Starjoy pencils. For Banff, I used Crayola. With Crayola, I found it easier to color in the detail. The pencils are harder, which allows for a razor sharp pencil point and allows me to get into all the little details. I'm very happy with the way this picture came out. After the first couple of pages, I mixed and matched pencil brands. And sometimes I went over, say, an orange from one brand with an orange from a different brand just to brighten up the picture. Now, I don't worry about doing all of the number one light blue colors in the picture before moving on to the next color, number two yellow. I just start somewhere, color for a while in that color in that area, and move on. Occasionally I will pause to blend, darken, or even erase an area. If I need more contrast in the greens, I'll pick new greens right in the middle of the picture. I'm not good with rules. I'll finish Bhutan in Magic Marker. This is not my favorite picture. In this picture, in many places, the same color, say number 12, dark beige, is right next to itself. This makes it hard to see detail. If this were pencils, I would just press harder in one area to make it darker and make it stand out, but that's more difficult with markers. So I have several dark beige markers that I'm using from different brands. And after the marker dries in an area, I'll go back and cover over some of the sections again. Since a lot of this is in rocks or trees, having multiple beiges or browns or grays and greens will look fine when the picture is done. 
And if I mess up and use a marker meant for seven light beige, where I should have used 16 light brown, the picture will look more shaded and detailed than the thumbnail on the front cover. So I will finish this picture in marker, but I'll use pencil for the rest of the book. Each page has some light and some dark lines, but it seems like some of these pages are just darker or lighter in general. Was this fun? Yes, this was fun. As I finished one picture, the next one in the book called to me. I've been keeping the book and the pencils by the TV where I sit, so they are always handy. It does take me a couple of days to finish a picture, but for me, working on it for an hour at a time is a long stretch. Usually something less interesting, like going to work, interrupts my coloring session. So far, I'm doing the pictures in order, but I'll skip around eventually. I recommend good light for this coloring book, and maybe reading glasses or other magnifying lenses. There is a lot of small detail in this coloring book for grown-ups. If you have a masterpiece that you've created, please leave a link in the comments to your YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, etc. site to share your beautiful work. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to working on more projects that you are interested in. Please like and subscribe and join us again for Suncoast Crafting.